Hello and welcome back to the On The Slab Horror Show, the show that we bring to you each and every Friday night. Why do we do this on a Friday night? Because Friday night is horror night. The three gentlemen here have been on the show before. They know the reason why we do it on a Friday night. The fans know. Um, but you may see, as I said, returning faces here. Um, we have writer, director, actor, jack of all trades, and all-round good guy, L.C. Holt, in the house. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. I appreciate that introduction. It's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I feel good about that. I wish everyone agreed with have... that. I agree. That's all you need. <laughs> we all agree. I'll agree. We do. Uh, we have probably the most recent uh, guest to come on was indie superstar producer, actor, showing up in every other project ever made now. In uh, Daniel John Kearney. How are you, sir? Oh, God. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. I did I did tell you when we done the episode to, to remember the name, and here we are again. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Jack of all then, trades. Yes, thank pretty you. Pretty much at this stage as well. Oh, and then we've you. got the, ma- the man who provided probably one of my most favorite pieces this year in Malum. Uh, I said to you on screen and in a review that it was the most Charles Manson-like performance that wasn't Charles Manson. Yeah. Uh, we have... Oh, uh, he even went by the name Greg in Lake Checkout. We have Mr. Cheney Morrow. How are you, sir? Uh, pretty good, man. How are you doing, Greg? Not too bad. Good to have you <laughs> back, gentlemen. It's good to be here, Thank buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, this one is... Three gentlemen that are well rounded in, in the horror scene, but this one's about a movie that they've all been involved in. Uh Elsie and Co were nice enough to let me have a watch of uh his newest movie, Watchdog. Um he obviously wrote and directed it. Cheney and Dan starred in it, and I think Dan produced it as well. That'd be right. Yeah. Correct yeah, Mundo. Um LC, let's jump yeah. straight in. Where all did right. this idea come from? Um, the idea for Watchdog came from, it was, I have a book of ideas that I keep around me and it's full of more ideas than I could ever write. Um, but Watchdog was one of the ideas in there. And originally I thought about writing it as a play and I wrote it for a while as a play and I, it didn't really take off for me. And, uh, and then I thought about writing it as a movie and for some reason it took off. So uh, that's really where it came from. And uh, origin wise, in all honesty, it owes a lot to films that I watched when I was a kid um, of a certain genre, which usually had something to do with a family or a couple that were very happy. And then some dark element comes into their lives and it just screws everything up. I mean, these are movies like Unlawful Entry or Hand the Rock the Cradle or uh, Pacific Heights or Bad Influence. I mean, Films like that, I grew up, there was a whole string of those in the early 90s, which was right in my formative years. Um, and I watched all of them and I always liked that element of it. Um, so it just seemed like an opportunity to do something similar to that, um, which is why I think of it more in those terms than I do in terms of it being like a modern home invasion movie, which is more like, you know, some of the things you'd already mentioned, like the movie I was in, You're Next. So it's different than You're Next, you know. You blew yeah. the next part for me. I was going to say, did the, did the the Hollywood blockbuster that you were in your next have anything to do with it? No, no, it really didn't. No. I mean, I no, I liked the genre from when I was a kid, and, and like I say, there is the home invasion aspect, but there's also that sort of aspect of you know something dark coming into a an idyllic situation, and that's yeah. sort of its own subgenre as well. And the movies that I'd mentioned earlier all kind of fit into that subgenre. The Comfort of Strangers is another good one from that time period. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's more where it came from, not so much from your next or anything. It's um, it's a home invasion movie, but it's not a home invasion movie, really. It, yeah, it, I it's mean, obviously set in a house, which either most movies normally are these days, if it's something like that, but it seems to be more of along the lines of a trauma movie to an extent at the minute that we're seeing a lot of, sure. Um, because obviously. Uh, no, no spoilers. I'm not going to give spoilers out on this because obviously 
we don't want to we don't want to give the movie away, but it's it is done in a horror thriller style, so you know bad shit's gonna happen. Did you say a trauma movie? Yeah. What so is like, that? Is it, that it, a what? What's an example so, of that? Um. So there's a few different ones as of late. So you've, have you seen? So say the likes of I don't know whether you've seen Melissa Barrera's new one, Bed Rest. I haven't. No. Is it good? Well. No, not really. No. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like <laughs> well, it's I appreciate your honesty. It's the easiest way. Sorry if you're watching this, Melissa, but it was just not a good movie. It was very predictable, very boring. But like, as you said, the happy family, and something happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Sure. So in that one, there it's most of the time you see like the ghost possession movies. So say even the new Boogeyman. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know whether you had the chance to see that with David Dalsmachi and yeah, uh, Beckham Woods wrote that. They adapted yeah. that. The guys that did Haunt, they adapted. Is that it, the uh, is that the Stephen, Stephen King, King thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I read the Stephen King short story, but I've not seen the movie. Yeah, it's, so it's pretty movie. pretty accurate. Really, in, in okay. the movie, yeah, yeah, it's, it's and, pretty accurate. Um, in the movie, there's a suicide in the house, and that's what brings in uh, whatever kind of yeah, creature it was. Okay. So that that's what I refer to as a trauma movie where something has happened. I know obviously yeah in this you have a, a guy that's not supposed to be there being there. Yeah, for sure. So He's that's, definitely, all, that's all your fault. Definitely not supposed to be there. <laughs> we'll blame Cheney for that one. Yeah. <laughs> why did you do that? Why did you do that, Cheney? What's your problem? Oh yeah, you're like I he Elsie wrote me to do that. That's why I did yeah. it. You should you should have just given that man your wallet. <laughs> It was like what, the Jim the Jim Jarmish movie or whatever or or no, no that, what's that line Cheney that you like so much in the mouth of madness he wrote me this way he wrote me this way I yeah, have to he line. wrote me this way I love it I good line <laughs> right before so Vigo the Carpathian blows his brains out <laughs> Vigo <laughs> yeah. scourge love, of Carpathian <laughs> command <laughs> me Lord <laughs> um. The but I know, of I, know, I know when we had you on the first time, LC, you'd, you'd kind of gotten ready to go to set um, in the September of last year. 2022, yeah. Yeah. Oh, to, to shoot Watchdog, yeah. you mean? Yeah. yeah. You, were getting ready, you were getting ready to go to, to shoot when we spoke to you the first time. Damn, has it been that long? Yeah. It has been. It has been. <laughs> it's been a while. It has. It, it, it you, has you've been. been busy. We've been busy. Yeah, I tell you. I finally, okay. I finally got my hands on a few movies that I've been chasing down for that time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. And going back to 2022, I just want to, I just want to interject this into the into the conversation. But um, early 2022, LC and I were wrapping up another film that we that we worked on together, um, and he he sent me the script, and I was like. I mean, we, I was just blown away. Like, I really loved it. And I'm not a big, and I'm not, you know, everyone knows this is fun, but I'm not, I'm not a big script guy. Like, I'm very visual. Like, so when I read scripts and things like that, like, I, I'm not a big reader. Um, but when I read them and I sit down, I'm committed to it, and I read it full, and I sit through the whole thing, it, it, it's something that really means a lot to me. And what Elsie wrote um, really stood with me. And I, I read it through the lens of a couple of characters that he thought that, he was, you know, had in mind for the project and instantly, I think, Elsie, I think it was like maybe one day later, I texted Elsie back, mm. like one day later and I was like, let's make, let's, I'm, I'm in, let's do this. Yeah. Was that, because was, I, at the time I knew we had Chaney and, and Felissa and, and others and um, I was yeah. just really in love, in love with the project and I think. I think that what hap- I think what came to fruition is really something special. Like you said, it's not because when I read it, I, I, and I again, I'm not, you know, I, when I read it, I never once thought home invasion. I never thought that when I read it, I thought it is there's this person loving someone in their life, and um, and and um, you know the things that happen to them for 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 having that cost of bringing someone in. So I never saw home invasion, but 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 when I read it, but that's a part of it. Um, but I um, I absolutely loved what it was, and I think it's something very different. And uh, I'm very happy with what everybody created, especially Chainu and Wes and Celeste, and everyone was just wonderful. 
I mean, I, I, I said it. I said I said it to you, Dan. I says it's obviously being on the indie scene. I says it. It just doesn't have that indie feel to it. Thank you. It's well. Uh, that's good. I mean, that that's kind of what I wanted. You know, I don't. You know, I want to do some, everything I do. I want to do differently than the last thing I did, and then like the last thing I want to do is watch something and then do that or copy it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like because if you're going to do that, because you know, uh, making movies takes up years and years of your life. It is exhausting. Mm-hmm. I've always said that it takes. I'm probably going to die five years younger from the movies I've directed, at least five years younger. So it's like you know, if you're going to do that expenditure, um then it has to be something you want to do for years and years and years or else. Yeah. And to me, like trying to copy things, it's why I'd say that like sequels and stuff are, it's going to be very hard for me to ever direct a sequel to anything I did because that's years to do something that's basically kind of already did it before, you know? So unless it's like super imaginative, wow, this is going to be the greatest sequel I can imagine. I just don't see it as being something that's uh, doable as a director, you know? Um, I mean, but go ahead. And like, you know, if, we were talking if, about sequels if you think about it, we yeah, if you think about it, there's a lot of movies and a lot of actors that don't do sequels up until Equalizer 2. Uh, yeah. Denzel had never done a sequel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I mean, movies I, don't need a sequel. I've never done a sequel. I'm, I'll tell you that as an actor, I'd be interested in doing a sequel just to try and play the same character again, which is something I've never done. I've, I've only played a character once uh, in every film I ever acted in. So I'm a little bit interested in the sequel as an actor. I'm interested in it more because it's like, hmm, I've never done it. You know, could I do that? Could I play the same guy again? And that's interesting. But like in terms of directing, it's like, man, that takes a lot of a lot of time to make one movie. Let alone. Especially especially if you're yeah. writing it as well, because then you have to write it in a way that you leave it open for something else. Yeah, and I don't like doing that. I don't like leaving it open. I mean, I, I hate this, like, we live in this age of the after credit scene on everything. It's like, everything needs an after credit scene, really? You know, it's, I mean, I can they always it. film it ahead of time, just in case it's popular and makes money. They yeah. already have their segue into, you know, part two. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can yeah. understand it for, like, the Marvel things, because they know there's going to be yeah, a million more. Yeah, that's a 20-year process of yeah. films. Yeah. But like every movie has to have an after credit scene. I'm like, Jesus Christ. There's gonna there be a was a of- long period of time yeah. where most movies coming out, most horrors, the good guy just didn't win. Like ever. Yeah. And I was getting tired of that. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, let the good guy win just, just once. You know, like Freddie lost at the end of, you know, Everyone most is. of them. Right. I mean, every, someone always every one of them really. got tired of seeing the bad guy get away with it. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, now sometimes it works really effectively. Like, uh, uh, I don't know if you've seen Speak No Evil. I have not. Uh, yeah. People keep telling me to watch it. And I'm like, that's a fucking boy. That's a movie you watch once and then it stays in your head for a few days and you realize how good it is. But you don't dare go back and watch it again. Like, you feel like I, you need I, to take a little like time. Schindler's List. Yeah, yes. That's well, yeah, yeah. List. yeah. Schindler's List is, pro- I mean, it's far more brilliant. Uh, but yeah. speak no evil is uh, there. America's already trying to remake it. The fucker came out less than a year ago, and I, I would I, I avoid it, it entirely. American. But I've heard they got McAvoy signed on already, and I'll watch anything with McAvoy. He's incredible. I uh, but that movie right there, that's that's the 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 feel that left in my mouth because it's not your straight up horror movie, but there's so much in it that. Uh, so much uncomfortability it's so well done so well acted that by the time it was over like i was praying for it to be over but not because i was bored <laughs> you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. jesus man like well where where is this going and then it goes where it goes and then by the end of it you're like it was like with the exhibit a movie but something i just can't can't go back to immediately because it was just that effective no but um for you, Tony, what was it? What was it like on set? Um, obviously, you played the one of the lead males. I I had a blast, man. Um, I was I think I was on every day that we were there, so I worked uh, every day. I liked that because it kept me even more uh, focused, more more keyed in to it. Um, the fact that we stayed in the house, some of us did, uh, that helped a lot. That was a nice you know, house. I too. really enjoyed that. Yeah, I got real familiar with the place. And you, 
yeah. it feels better if you you know because a lot of the furniture like when you first get you're like damn i i don't even know how to sit on this fucking thing you know <laughs> <laughs> but you spend some time it kind of becomes your it's easy to kind of fall into the environment you know uh everybody there every actor was so damn good and uh, uh celeste i gotta shout her out man uh watching her motivated me to kick my game up as much as i could because i saw how good she was doing she was so prepared she every scene it. she knew exactly the uh where to go how to get there and could maintain it just endlessly and then it would be over like the right? and she's back to awesome celeste you know she's like all right you know go to bed see y'all was, she was she was really really good so i was i was intimidated uh or ah, maybe that's i guess that's not the word but she was a a key part of the uh motivating me to really really kick it up you know it was i i, I get what you mean she was, at, she me was and, it's, it's our house she you know she is so important <laughs> in the in the story in the arc of, of the story um i loved it man uh lc's a my kind of director you know like and, and we had the benefit because we'd read it i'd read it so much with him and we talked about it for months that uh you know there weren't a whole lot of questions character wise uh it was more just about uh, you know dial it back kick it up dial it back kind of thing you know there, there was an understanding there and he trusted me with travis uh and that meant the world and i absolutely didn't want to let him down uh and i had always read that like when you're that high on the call sheet you should really strive to set an example you know really try to be present at all times and i, I hope i was you know uh Without a doubt. but all i can really say is man i, just, I had a wonderful time everybody there was doing their job they were enjoying it. It was just that it was an awesome environment and for such a movie that's so heightened, like all the time. <laughs> you know, there's so it's, much. It's so much it, and you would never guess that when they when we said cut, me and Jake are fucking laughing our asses off about something. You know, <laughs> or me and Wes are jo or, or like someone cracks a joke. Yeah, <laughs> you would never guess that, but that's really what it was like. And I, uh, it's one of the best experiences I've ever had. Uh, uh, shout, hands shout down, out to, shout out to Wes as well. He absolutely yeah. fucking smashed it. Oh yeah, man, yeah. I love that yeah. guy. I, I definitely want to give I want to give a shout out to Wes because he is not only is he a great actor, but all of those um, graphics for the Indiegogo, um, the secondary poster, him and another person worked on it. But all that stuff, you know, Wes created that all those graphics. Yeah. Oh wow. I wrote I wrote the stuff for the Indiegogo, but all those graphics and like you know countdown to, you know the trailer, all those things. Day one, day two, all that, all that was Wes designed all that. So he was I'm incredible. Sure. When we were when we were going through preparation, Elsie and I, and and Janie and Felissa, uh, when we go through preparation, he was like, "What can I do? What can I do? What can I do?" And he just really brought it and uh, helped the camp. He just helped the campaign and just helped the process so much. And he he's, I love him. Uh, and that's and why he's with us so many other things. Hopefully, and I wanted, hopefully I wanted to show with him soon. So oh, you definitely should. He's a good one. Um, but he is, man. Uh, I, um, you know, I, uh, I wanted to point that out, but you know, beyond that, because I think he's, you, you don't know as much about like that behind the scenes, him, him, him designing graphics and stuff so i think that's worth pointing out but beyond that it's like the acting just on its own he's a great guy he takes it very seriously and he brings you know 100 to it and um and really brought to life in that character that he plays this sort of um humanity in the character not that he's a quote good bad guy i mean he does things that are irredeemable but um, so it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, he's a bad guy with a heart of gold. No, he's pretty much. A, uh, he's got his reasons. He's, yeah. a dick. he's no yeah. Hans Gruber. Lads. He's no Hans Gruber. He's no Hans Gruber. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but he, I mean, to be as nice, to be as like a nice a guy as he is and to, to be able to do that as effectively as he did, I think, you know, shows a lot. And, and it's also like him and. 
Chaney and, uh, you know, Chaney and Dan, I knew before Felissa, these, there were people that I'd worked with previously. Um, Celeste and, and Wes, I had worked on and met on a movie of Tori Jones is called, uh, Phantom Fun World. And we had all three acted in that movie. A lot of the crew for this movie also, I met on that movie, Jaron and who was the yeah. cinematographer and the editor and stuff. So uh, actors and crew. But when I was on that movie, I had already written Watchdog, but I hadn't, you know, no more than that. And I, I saw Wes and Celeste on that movie and I saw how dedicated they were and how good they were and how good people they were, too, because, you know, it, it really doesn't matter if you're a really good actor. If you're just like a horrible person to be around, then it's like for me, eh, it's OK. <laughs> But it's like, yeah. you know, if you're a good person and you're a good actor and, you know, you can work well together. I mean, to, to be able to find two of the lead actors out of the blue like that, I was not expecting that because I met them on the movie. I worked with them, obviously, in scenes. Um, and uh, and I was like, damn, is it possible that I found Anna and and uh, Drew, the characters from Watchdog? Did, did I just find both of them on this movie and come to find out I did? And that's what Elsie yeah. said to me. That's what he's. That's not not at that moment when he was on set because we weren't in, we weren't in pre production at that point. But literally uh, when we started talking, um, you know, about about bringing the the project to life, he said, "I think I found them both on that set." And um, I couldn't agree more. I could yeah, not agree yeah, more. I mean, they, were, they were perfect. I remember when they you were, told me uh, uh, that you're like, ah, oh, the guy who's going to uh, play Drew, I met him uh, on this movie. His name's Wes Robinson. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, and he's like, yeah, well, he was in, uh, he's like, he's, he worked with Wingard also. He was in Blair Witch. And I remembered Blair Witch, but I only saw it once. Uh, and I didn't, I was one of those guys that liked it. You know, I had no idea that yeah, there was some yeah. negativity towards the movie. I had no idea. I was, I was like, yeah, I remember. I, I liked that. Uh, uh, and he's like, well, he was so-and-so. I'm like, well, I don't remember it that well. I was like, I do remember there's one person in it that I liked, like that I liked a lot. Uh, please, God, let that be him. Uh, and when I went back to the movie, I was like, hey, it is. Yes. <laughs> I like that movie for about like, He was the one I liked. Yeah. I really enjoyed him. <laughs> About eighty percent of that yeah. new Blair Witch I liked, and then it just kind of went a bit wayward. I was yeah, like, well, I was I was never big into like the the you know the mythos around it. It wasn't precious to me, you know. So I just well, I think I watched it because uh, Wingard. I'd seen a bunch of his movies. I liked him, and uh, and I I remember it's a true story, man. Like didn't remember much about the movie, but I remembered there was one guy in it that stood out to me, and I liked him. And it turns out that was Wes. So I was excited as hell uh, when they mentioned. I was like, "Excellent!" So we're not, we're playing with fire now. Yeah, we used I mean, to talk I, about on the set of cooking movie, with canola talk. oil, baby. Wes had done <laughs> Wes had done a lot of TV stuff, and it was always like Wes Wes Robinson of ER fame, Wes Robinson of Ghost Whisperer fame, because he'd done all these episodic things, you know. Yeah, but that me, was a, that was a good bit on set. We're like, yeah, you know, Wes Robinson from uh, Gilmore Girls. Or yeah. Wes Robinson from ER, like everybody kept doing. Remember that? Yeah, I, I was fuck. I was impressed. I was like, Jesus, dude, you've been yeah, in every. You're yet, you're yet to hit a TV show that I've seen. Yeah, that dude did a lot of episodic TV. It's if you go and look up his credits, it's pretty crazy how many episodic TV series. Yeah. It was like, it's impressive. I've had, a, I've, I've had a few conversations with him. We're trying to line up a date. Um, he seems like a really nice guy, though. Oh, yeah. he's he's great. He's great, man. He's we had a great time. Red, Red we had an him. absolute amazing time on set. We had an amazing, absolute time on set. It was just, it was a beautiful property and all that stuff. And Cheney and I and LC, um, we've been room buddies sometime, and they've had a deal with my uh, horrible snoring <laughs> that I that I do. <laughs> That's fine. You're just annoying. So nice. Just annoying. It doesn't Chaney, happen. Cheney's so sweet. He's like. Katie's like, oh, 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 Dan, no, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. And, but meanwhile, the next day I wake up, he's sleeping downstairs on the couch. And LC, I, when we were doing late checkout, dude, you remember how bad that was? <laughs> I, I, what I remember most from late checkout is is the first night I got there, <laughs> me, and, me and Chaney and Dan were had a drink, and we were talking about watchdog stuff. And then I guess people started getting tired. 
And then Dan went into the bedroom and I swear it wasn't 30 seconds later, I started hearing the snoring. And my initial thought was he's fucking with me because you can't fall asleep that fast. There's no way. I could differ. And but he by God, he went in there. And as soon as the light went off, this snoring started. And I was just like, what the hell is this? No, I never forget. It's like, is, is he serious? Yeah, I was like, is he serious? Is he serious? He's joking. He couldn't have fallen asleep that bad, that quick. So I actually oh, slept I, on the I couch like that night. I, I slept on the like I slept on the living room couch and then I woke up the next morning to Felissa looking down on me. And I was like, Whoa shit, welcome to late checkout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, I felt so bad. Um no, but uh, obviously news broke uh today upon recording that uh the day for late checkout is is due out. So shout out to anyone involved in that project, being all three of you as well. <laughs> all of us. It was yeah. a fun one, man. It was a fun yeah. one. Oh my god! I, fu- I fucking loved time. it. That's I gotta time. admit, when I when I, I I had no idea what to think because I had uh I couldn't remember how it ended initially. <laughs> I was about to have to go back and find the script because I couldn't remember it because uh the I wasn't a part of the ending. You know, it wasn't filmed any time I was there. <laughs> So yeah. the ending was an actual, was very nice treat to me. It was, it was like, oh, sweet. This is, and I thought the ending was hysterical. Uh, that movie cuts right to it. There's no bullshit. Mm-hmm. There is zero Great. fat in that movie. Uh, I think it succeeds where some other flicks uh, didn't. I, I'm, I'm happy as hell with Late Checkout. I'm glad that it's, uh, uh, me too. That it's coming, man. I, I really am. I love it. Me too. Uh, we had the best time. Grew with the best time. I mean, I I when I when I when I when I go to shoots and stuff like that, if it's more than like two days, I, I kind of like really miss home. And Jane and I always talk about this, like miss our kids and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I was there for four or five days. And but when I but when it was over, like I didn't want to leave. You know, I missed everybody, but I didn't want to leave. Like I just love being around everybody so much, and we had such a great time. Like, and that shows up on camera. That really does. We had such a great time. Parties, like, you know, everybody did the job. Everybody did the work. Everybody took it very, very seriously. But we all had a great time at the same time. And that camaraderie really showed off on camera, I think. And but it's one I, of my favorite things we've ever done together. That's what I said to you on the episode, Dan. Um, it seemed like everybody are just friends. And it makes things a lot easier to go. Um, and obviously, it's it's gone from late checkout now to... To watch dog, obviously, Cheney relinking in again with LC. Uh, Dan's obviously involved as well. Um, so like obviously everyone has a great rapport, and Dan's just putting his name to absolutely everything at the minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Watchdog was it was a fun, it was a good group on that too. I mean, it was you know we. No, but that, that's what I mean. Like the, the yeah. group linking in and then obviously going from movie to movie oh, helps because sure. you've got, oh, you've, yeah. got um, yeah. you've got the, the friendship and, and well, the trust it's, there. Well, too, and it's good just to work with people that, that are easy to work with, too. You know, I mean, it makes where, it Where so did you get Cheney from then? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <I mean>. um, <laughs> it's, no, but Cheney, I met him uh, on a movie. I actually met him before. But the first time we physically met was on this movie called Terror Trips. Great movie. Yeah. Jeff Simmons. Because he had a, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he and I had a mutual friend. And then uh, we met through the friend. And then we hit it off ourselves. And then, um, yeah. So Terror Trips was the first time we had worked physically together. And that Cheney was the, first, you know, Cheney's the kind of guy you could talk to him a couple times. And, and get along with him. And then the first time he sees you, he just gives you a big hug, like you've known him for 10 years. And yeah. it's like, I knew I would get along with this guy. Maybe, maybe one day. Yeah. Oh, it'll happen. I have a feeling, I have a feeling <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to make a movie here for it to happen. I'm far too poor to go to the States. Oh, I would love sure. to make a movie. And I'd love Me to too. make a movie in Scotland. Are you kidding? I'm yeah. in Ireland. Oh, sorry. That was a big faux okay. pas. I take I take great <laughs> offense to that. Take that, take that. Um, just go back and clip that. Okay, let's let's start. Let's start this. Um, I have my ready. Man. Motherland. Right. Clip, clip, clip. Here we go. Okay, everybody, calm down. I have to be a director here for a second.
<laughs> um, uh, okay, here we go. I I would love to make a movie in Ireland. Um, <laughs> uh, the scenery. I, I actually do have fan. I actually have a family that is from Ireland. Yeah, I, I mean, my my lineage is spread far and wide. <laughs> okay, but I actually have um, uh, my father's um, mother's family was from Ireland. They they were the Collinses. From where at all? Uh, you know, I don't know. I just know she came from <laughs> Ireland. You know, I did. I didn't actually sit her <laughs> down and inter- I didn't she interrogate her. Smart. Greg, I didn't sit her down and interrogate her before she died. I probably That's should have about a lot. Of things. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no. But I do know that. But I yeah, I'd love to see Ireland. It's uh, not a lot. But great. last time you and I talked, you told me they don't have a lot of conventions there. No. Nope. So there's one, and it lasts for six hours or something. Six hours? Six hours, yeah. Now, to day. be fair to that, to be fair to that convention, their first year they opened, they had Tony Todd at it. Oh. Well, that's so, good. That's a good one. But I don't even know where it is now. I don't know when it is. So we went to the one in Manchester. Uh mm-hmm. shout out to the lads for the love of horror, which is Europe Europe's biggest horror convention. And it was yeah. off the charts. Yeah. Um but um Hopefully, the likes of Watchdog will be picked up majorly, and maybe you maybe you even might get the call to go to for the love of her. Um, obviously yourself, Elsie. The following that your next has, um, is is relatively big as well. Um, yeah. because when we were at the con, someone was walking around with your lamb mask on. Oh yeah, yeah. I know that <laughs> Europe in general and Japan. They loved your next far more than they did in the States. I mean, the States, it did okay, but like did a lot of money overseas and Japan, forget about it. Like I, there's a lamb mask, uh, Lego figure in Japan, which is that? Was, yeah, I've seen uh, pictures of it, but I, somebody needs to send me the damn thing. Cause you know, I'd like to have it. Yeah, um, I'd like one, but, please. <laughs> but apparently you can only get it in Japan. Cause I, at some of these conventions, you know, they'll have those little Lego figures where it's like, everybody every character and every character's cousin from star wars has their own little figure and so i'll go around and i'll look and i'll be like so one of these conventions one of these lego guys has got to have a lamb mask in there somewhere but i've never been able to physically find it well i i can't make i'm not gonna say i make it to japan but uh, <laughs> me, me i do either. know some people in japan and if they are coming back to Ireland, i'll ask them to see if they can find it i'd love to go to japan too and ireland and Scotland. So, so yeah. would I. Japan Japan looks unreal. Oh, I would uh, love to go to Japan. Yeah, I mean, I, I that culture is so fascinating. To have that much, uh, you know, history on that, that island that goes back longer than America has been a country, you know, mm-hmm. is pretty fascinating. Pretty fascinating. Well, see, that, that's what happens on this show. You get distracted and go into random conversations. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, sorry. Now we're talking about Japan. <laughs> Yeah, Watchdog. Yeah, Watchdog is this, as I'm, my favorite movie of anything I've done, which is not bullshit, actually. It is my favorite of anything I've ever directed. And I'm, I can't wait for people to see it. Um, and uh, we, I want to talk, you know, you were talking about the decor of the house, which was a very nice house, Greg. You pointed that out in Watchdog, the house we used. It was. But the funniest thing was Mark Patton coming into that house and checking out that decor of that house. Yeah, I remember? Was, he was not a fan. Mark was not a fan <laughs> of the decor. He had something to say about everything. Because the um because that what you see in the house, that a lot of that, I don't know if any of that, other than moving some pictures around, was brought by us. Like that's the way the house looked. You know, yeah. we moved some paintings that were less appropriate. I mean, not that they were naked people or anything, but it just looked better in the background to have this painting other than that painting. But other than that, that's the way the house was. And it had a very unusual decor in the little living room area. And uh, and I think Mark objected to the fact that almost every room had a different decor. Because, you know, Mark used to be an interior designer um, after he was an actor. Oh, uh, and I, before I he came back. Yeah. So <clears throat> he has very yeah. distinctive ideas about uh, interior uh, design. <laughs> they did not line up with this homeowner's ideas at all. Yeah, um, yeah. Please, and if I, I and I'll see if I could just interject, my man. If I could just interject, I mean, so the house was, and I'm closing my eyes for a second. I'm I'm going 
going up there. So, I mean, we were, we were, it was really in kind of a off the road scenario. Like you had to go in a car, it was like a dirt road, broken, you know, broken down dirt road to get there. And you open up and we're in the middle of this beautiful area, beautiful part of Alabama. And there's this, like a mansion and, you, and yeah. you're there. But to piggyback of what Elsie said, every room was like different. So it was it was very exotic. Like the upstairs, the bedrooms were different. The downstairs, the living room, everything was different. And it just it was uh, really stood out. But what was kind of strange of it is that we open up and we're in, you know, we're in in Alabama and beautiful woods, beautiful area, beautiful town. And we open up and there's this mansion there, and every room was different. It was just completely exotic. Um. But Mark didn't like it. The, he didn't, he the, didn't the, like that. Like, yeah, the living room. He yeah, was he not didn't, a fan. He didn't like. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he liked the kind of, um, you know, it was a beautiful home, but the the art in it. But it worked perfect for the film because every every room looked right. different. Yeah, know? it was great. Um, and obviously having um two horror icons as well coming into the into the movie with Felissa and Mark. Um, for the fans that don't know, but Mark Patton was um, Nightmare on Elm yeah. Street two. Sorry, I'm losing yeah. my voice here. Um, and obviously, Felissa needs no introduction around any horror genre fan ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were yeah. they were an interesting duo together because they've been friends for a long time too. Yeah, they were a lot of fun to watch together. Mark's character was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad. I think Mark did a very good job. Um, he was, he was just so did. abrupt. There's no. He's Absolutely, nothing. and I just need to add to this, and I don't want to spoil anything. I'll see if so you can slap me if I'm, you know, through the phone if I'm saying too much. But there's also a lot of other scenes that, um, because we filmed a lot for the for the movie, uh, but there's also a lot of scenes that didn't end up in the final cut, and man. He really, him and Jamie and Celeste and everybody really brought it in those scenes too. And I hope some sometime that they, uh, if it's a Blu-ray or anything like that, they see that they see the light of day because those are really good abrupt scenes, like you said, really good stuff. He was, he was yeah, just that, gas. That movie was um, at the the last thing I directed. There was no, there was really no cut scenes other than maybe two, I think. Um, Everything that was shot was in the movie, that movie. With Watchdog, it was different in so much as that the first cut of Watchdog was almost two hours long, um, yeah. which I felt was too long. Um, that and then we cut it back, and then I cut it back a little bit more to the final version. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a good bit of deleted scenes with Watchdog. Who knows? Maybe I'd, I'd be maybe, interested in watching them. I think people will uh, would like it. It's nothing that. Um, obviously integral you don't cut anything out that's like absolutely integral to understanding anything but um character stuff yeah. well that's that's not true you're not supposed to cut out now that's integral you could look at i am legend with the cinematic end and then and then you look at their alternative ending which now they're making a second one from god yeah. i am legend yeah yeah jesus have you, ever seen the, have you ever seen the alternate ending no, I saw the first one. That was too much. <laughs> uh, the alternate <laughs> ending uh, uh, is he I never saw the, the first one. He gives back the the weird alien thing that they're healed and he survives rather than blowing himself up. Oh, but what's the point of the title though? I have no idea. Yeah, I mean that was the whole in the book the whole point is he's the, he dies, he, he he's the last human and so I am legend. Yeah. So with, with the movie, when you watch it, if he doesn't die, then I, am I think nothing. the second one's called Psych. <laughs> Psych. I think. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I, I am legend too. Psych. Yeah. Huh. I don't know, man. That Will Smith got into that that time period of just like I Robot, I Am Legend. It's like let's take every legendary book within its genre. You know, one of the best science fiction books ever written, one of the best horror books ever written. And let's just see if we can just turn it into a Will Smith movie. You know, it's like, yeah. come on, dude. And I'll and I'll watch it too. <laughs> yeah. And I'll watch it. Yeah. But yeah. um no, uh just before we finish sort of wind down a bit, um, lads, the movie was off the charts. Um Thanks. 
Thanks, man. As it says, I put Thank up, you so I put up a little review on the on the Insta page and stuff, but uh, I haven't had a chance to put one on Letterbox or anything for you yet. Oh, um, thank you. But, thank you so um, much. Appreciate it, it, Greg. I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Jenny, you're crushing absolutely everything at the minute. Thanks, buddy. Just I one, one, one thing at a time until, until they it. stop hiring me. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you keep doing performances like that, they're not going to stop. Well, uh, I mean, Cheney, so. Cheney, Cheney really gives a hell of a performance in Watchdog. And, you know, it's a subtle, it, it's, a, it's one of those performances that could go, you know, thankless to some degree because it's very hard to be subtle. You know, it's easy in a movie to be bombastic. Look at me. Yeah. Here mm-hmm. I am. But if you have to get right there in the camera, and actually just deliver an emotion very uh, subtly, that's hard. Yeah. That's really, really hard. And like, uh, yeah. Cheney does a great job in this, of playing the guy who, you know, just has never quite made it in his life, you know? But he's just one step away from it if he could just get over a, a hump, you know, a, a personality. Yeah. Of, uh, like, are we talking about Cheney or Travis? Because that's pretty damn similar. Um, I'm, th- I'm, th- I'm talking about, well... <laughs> <laughs> well, so well, we'll plead the fifth here. We'll plead the fifth. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we're all like that. I'm like that. You know, we're going to psychoanalyze um, me. Jesus Christ, how many hours you got? But uh, there's, I will say, and I'm not going to give that in away. But there's, there's one scene in the movie where, uh, you have the plate, the two plates, the ball and the cup. Oh yeah, in it that intricate moment of moving with them yeah i you could just feel how painful that must be and he mm-hmm. was really now let me just tell you he was really and i won't go into what the position is even though that sounds slightly sexual but uh, i won't give <laughs> away what the circumstances his character's in but he was really in those circumstances there was no like <laughs> let's fake this he was actually there Ballin. like that yeah Tides, yeah yeah and he had yeah. all he had was like a thing because you know me and cheney have uh exposed rib syndrome because we're so goddamn skinny about it so <laughs> all he had was he had like a little foam you know to protect the old rib cage rooney there uh but other than that that he was he was on his own making his way across that and uh you know and and we did that in real time with no faking, even though in the movie there's a couple cuts because yeah. real time was actually quite long. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Jane. But, uh, um, but yeah, yeah he did one, all that. That one I really bought into. You could see the look of pain as he was trying to get from one to the other. It was I liked it. It was, it was a little painful, <laughs> but I did. I, I liked that, that the pain was there. I knew it was only going to help, you know, that it would look good. So um, that, was, that was a no brainer. And before where... and before anybody throws any rocks at me, I just want to say Cheney insisted on doing it that way. No, he didn't. I did. <laughs> I made him. I, I put him in that position. And I said, "God damn it, get over there." This, what what you do? This is where you fed him a six pack and then let him lie down to sleep. He woke up like that. <laughs> right. I knocked um... on his trailer door like, "I'll oh, see." I went and then I opened it. And he says, "Out, out, out! Who do you work for? Out!" <laughs> <laughs> I have no money. <laughs> That's right. Um, That's right. But there was also a scene at the top of the stairs with an interaction between Celeste and Wes midway through. And I mean to say, she sells what happens there better than most oh, wrestlers yeah. that sell things. Oh, you mean the, the, the physical experience or the talking? Yeah. No, the physical one where she, yeah. where she gets. Yeah, I know. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That, oh, she, she, she sold that brilliantly. She did. Right. Great, great, um, great, great. Everybody in this movie, that, that's the thing, is there's no clunkers in it, and that's that's what's really important. Um, yeah. obviously we do a we do a rating of out of five slabs of meat that we normally do when we do a film review. Um obviously I'm not gonna ask you because you're involved in it. Um I tried doing that with a few people and I asked them, I says, if it wasn't your movie, what would you do? And it's like it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, but there was a couple of things that I brought up to Dan off screen um, about it. Obviously, a shout out to Derek Worley as well, who done the yeah special effects because yeah, and- the man's just a fucking genius. 
Derek Worley, fantastic effects. Um, uh, Frank Dormani, music. Music was and, quality. And my boy, uh, Jaron Lewis, who was both the cinematographer and worked with me as the editor throughout a yeah. very long process of editing. You know, editing takes a long time. And that boy edited the fuck out of this movie, man. He, yeah. shot, the, he shot the fuck out of it, too. But, you know, that's a compressed period of time. <laughs> When you get into editing, that's like months and months and months and months and months. You know? no. um, yeah, we love everybody. Them. Absolutely, everyone absolutely nailed it. Um, the movie's going to be a huge success. I have no doubt about that. Um, for Thank me, you. if I was to give it a rating, obviously, um, I had linked it somewhat to a trauma, trauma home invasion hybrid kind of movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd I'd easily go between four and four and a half slabs oh wow thank I you the, the script, thank the you. script thank you. was brilliant um thank you so much it wasn't like the script wasn't overly diverse where it needed to be rewatched to understand it yeah the acting was brilliant the lighting the sound everything was great as it says it's the most un-indie indie movie i've ever seen Fantastic. thank you so much Thank you so much for saying. We're so happy to hear that. We're so happy yeah. to hear that. Like this is all. This is like our baby, really. Like for like, we're just we're so happy that you that you that you did gave us that. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. I loved it. As I said to you, we spoke to you last year, LC, and here we are now, a year later. Would it made? Because when we done the show with Cheney, he was only back off. Say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, lads, before we finish up, uh, I've got these card games to try with you. Right. <laughs> it's called a What Would You Do? So it gives you a random scenario. Evil. Right? What okay. would you do? All right. Yeah. Um, these were kindly gifted to me at a, for the love of her by um, a gentleman at a stall from www.evilcardgames.com. It's where you can get them. You can get evil shreds, uh, evil what would you do and stuff. So this gives you the most random question that you can imagine. Yeah. Oh, I was expecting these to be much worse. Uh, you got a handy one. Okay. You've been fired from work. What do you do? <laughs> uh, cry and then get another job. <laughs> how, how do you get fired from making your own movies? Well, I mean, you know, I don't know. I've been fired before. Trust me. Right. Not from making movies, though. Right. <laughs> here we go here's your second one no i thought we were going back and forth he get, oh. i get one he gets one. Oh yeah I, I'll, I'll get the next one i'll get the next one that way because yeah. you know. then we have to okay. kill time for cheney gets back here we go so lc just got fired from his own thing his question was if you got fired what would you do right yeah and Put i said you cry and you get another job <laughs> go drinking is the correct answer Yes. Oh shit! I know you're from Ireland. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <That's true though. laughs> um, Dan, you see your partner kissing another person of the same sex. What do you? Wait, do? what's it? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Say one more. Is it for me? Yeah, you see your partner of. <clears throat> sorry, you see your partner kissing another person of the same sex. What do you do? Wow. Do I wear a condom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you telling me are there really like answers? No, no, no. This is just generally what would you do? Oh, so Should there's I wear not a like condom, a condom, babe. Should I wear a condom, babe? <laughs> Can I come too? <laughs> right, Cheney. Oh, sorry, oh, you you get you get a tasty one here. All right. <clears throat> You meet your favorite celebrity and they offer you 10 grand to watch you put your finger up your ass. What do you do? I didn't. I politely refuse because my favorite celebrity, I think he would pay, I think he would offer way more. Depends on who it is. 10 grand. If you put a zero on that, I mean, then we're talking. (laughs) Well, who's, who's your favorite celebrity? I know the answer. That's tough. What? Yeah, there's who? William there's Forsyth. A... William Forsyth. He, he's up he's, there. He was. He was uh, at the con that I was at. Yeah, my fa- if my favorite celebrity said, "Here for ten grand, 
uh, put your finger in your ass. Put my finger in my ass or their finger in my ass? Your finger. My finger in my ass. Okay. No, I, I would say, no, nah, man, I'm, uh, I would say tack on a zero and we're talking. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. 10 grand. Fuck 10 grand, dude. Come on. Uh, 10 times 10. And, uh, and, you know, buy me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to need a big bottle of wine. <laughs> right, LC. Um, <clears throat> a policeman arrests you, but will let you off if he can go down on you. What would you do? Oh, it's a he, huh? Um, yeah. It, it literally says he. I got you. Well, <laughs> I guess I'm going to be going away for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Take me to jail. <laughs> Take my ass to jail. Take me to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Dan, you get another nice one. You do a test okay. and you see you've failed. The examiner has left the room and left the answer paper behind. Do you change your answers? Oh, that's like a good one. Yeah. Wait. They're, so, they're just random. Because that's like re realistic. Take a dirtier yeah. one. Yeah, because that's like Dan, anybody. I'm, I'm picking them at random. Hold on, let me go through it then. Pick a well, dirtier one. Right, answer that, Dan. I will. Hell yeah, you change your answers. Hell okay, yeah, I would. would. But yeah, no. It's just a, it's a, it's a, kid, it's a stupid. It's answers. a stupid little test anyway, and that guy dropped. Oh, he's got the hardcore ones. Questions over here. Yeah, he fucked up. Right here you go, then Dan. You walk in on your okay. parents having sex. What do you do? Oh my god. You still got that condom on you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what nah. the fuck I do. I don't even know. Drink myself blind. You walk back out is the right answer, I'd say. <laughs> Drink myself blind after that point. I don't even know. Are we talking eighties, nineties, or two thousands? I don't know. Forget about it. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> um, that was just a fun thing that we've done. Obviously, uh, back around the time we used to do the dog soldiers and American Werewolf conversation. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think that started just after we'd done the episode with ULC and obviously we said off screen you would have went American Werewolf uh -huh. but boys check this out oh wow there's your dog soldiers t-shirt oh yeah. wow beautiful I'm, I love that movie that t-shirt is 10 years old I came from Fright Rags cool that's awesome that's genius but uh, yeah, gents I, yeah. It's it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, and as I said, you're welcome back absolutely any time. Um, hopefully not as long the next time. Yeah, Thank man. You so much. It was a pleasure. But, uh, Always a pleasure. And, Always uh, a pleasure. Thank you so much for the time. As soon as soon as there's much news, more news about Watchdog being distribution and when it's coming out, we'll definitely share the fuck out of it for you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. And I'm you. I'm glad you enjoyed the the movie, and I can't wait. Me for too, dude. To see it. Well, actually, just before you go, I have a, a little ranking that I do of all 2023 movies, right? That I've seen. I've seen 73 2023 movies. Really, wow. 73. Right? 73. Wow. It's an awful lot. <laughs> wow. Um. Now that ranges from Mission Impossible to. Uh, some indie movie that I don't think ever actually came out. Mm -hmm. Um, where do you think I ranked you? I, I hoped you ranked us above um, Mission Impossible. <laughs> That's, number, <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> oh, I'll say, 12. I'll say, on seventy three, you ranked us at twenty five. Twenty five, twelve. What else? Give me a number. Twelve. Twelve. No, Cheney said twelve. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, 20, 12, 12, 13, 18. You should have started numbers 13. up there. 13? Instead of 13. No, That's shit. Where I 13. That's where I put it in. All right. Wow, 13. Oh, that means so much to us. That is, man. I, That's I, great. Loved it. Loved cool. it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, um, yeah. But as I said, this has been your Friday night with the lads. 
Um, hopefully, as I said, it won't be too long before we see them all again. Um, and the way the way they're all putting movies out, I, I doubt that it will be. Um, and I wish you every success with Watchdog and any of the other projects you have coming up. Um, Thank you. Obviously, there's some big big things coming as well. Um, yeah. From from everyone here. Um, but as I says, this has been your Friday night, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll finish this the way I finish every single Friday night. In the words of the great George A. Romero, stay scared. <laughs> <laughs>